This is what your teachers haven't been telling you about the octet rule. So the octet rule states that atoms have a maximum of eight electrons in their valence shell, which is something you use to draw Lewis dot diagrams. But it actually only really applies for the elements in the second and the third row of your periodic table. And that's because you can think of every row as an energy level in the periodic table. So if you count across, there's eight boxes in the periodic table for row two and row three. So that represents about eight electrons. When you get up to row four, you start introducing your D block, which is an additional 10 electrons. So from row four onwards, they can start adding more electrons onto the valence shell. And then hydrogen and helium are only in row one, so they only have the first energy level with an s orbital. So hydrogen and helium can have a maximum of two electrons, not eight. So that's sort of like their duet rule. And lithium, beryllium, and boron are in the second energy level too, but they're relatively small, so they don't always satisfy the octet rule, but they can. So the way you know how many valence electrons an atom has when you're drawing the Lewis dot diagram is really to just look at the formula. So look at the central atom and see how many common elements is surrounding it. So let's say for example you have PF5. So because there's five fluorines it makes sense that that's the one that gets attached around and the phosphorus sits in the middle. So because the phosphorus sits in the middle of five fluorines it just becomes natural that you form a single bond for each of them. So that's two electrons each. So in total that would make 10 electrons. So likewise, if you have a formula like BH3, B goes in the middle, the three hydrogens go on the outside. Because there's only three atoms bonding with the one in the middle, that's only really six electrons, not eight. 